Greetings and salutations. Thanks for clicking on the video. Today we're taking a look at Linux Mint 17.2 running on my main computer. We talked about it in the last video when I installed it in a virtual machine and I told you then that I had put it on another machine here in the house. And yesterday I was going to make a video about something. I don't remember what it was. You probably wouldn't have liked it very much anyway. And it wouldn't record audio. I was getting that static, but much worse. And I tried a whole bunch of different things, different settings, and it, it just wouldn't work. Something had gone kerflui in the Ubuntu setup. And I sat there and thought about it for a couple of minutes, and I went, you know what? It's time to give Mint a try again as the main OS. And so I blew out the Ubuntu install. I had done all that stuff to it and put that Cinnamon desktop on it anyway. And let, let's start fresh and clean. So I put Linux Mint on and spent yesterday afternoon reloading this machine. Now this is different for me than doing it on another computer or doing it on a virtual machine because this is my computer and this is my personal, this is the big deal. This is also the Samba server on the network. So reloading this machine takes a little bit of thought and it this is the one that absolutely has to work so uh, it was kind of a big deal for me to move from Ubuntu to Linux Mint again this machine used to run Linux Mint then I ran into a bunch of problems with 17.1 put it on Ubuntu I've been doing that I guess for about the last six months or so it's been on Ubuntu now we're back to Linux Mint and check this out gang that's right it's KDN Live and it is running on Linux Mint and it pretty much works we have all the icons and everything that we're supposed to have and I was playing around with it last night and I got it to work and I did it by having to basically go through and install all of the KDN Live dependencies myself now I still don't have every single feature that I had when I was running this on Ubuntu but it actually seems to work better because on Ubuntu I was having issues with it and I guess me having to go through and find all the stuff is, has made it where it's running a bit better here. So I'm going to go ahead and put these install commands down in the description in case you would like to try and get KDN Live running on Linux Mint. This is what worked for me. Do it one line at a time and it will pull in pretty much all of the dependencies that KDN Live needs to run on Linux Mint. And it does download a lot of stuff because you're bringing in a KDE desktop environment application onto the Cinnamon desktop so it needs to get everything uh, that it needs to run it. But it works and it allowed me to render to an MP4 file last night and I was pretty happy about that took a look at Lightworks which I have been telling people about for my own personal use and benefit and that's too complicated for me and OpenShot was too simple so KDN Live I had to make it work so I did so that's pretty cool 17.2 is a pretty awesome distro one of the things I like that Linux Mint has done is they've upgraded this kernel and we let's see let's um, show you the kernel so the running kernel here is um, 316.0.38 and I'm assuming that we'll get security updates on this kernel as they become available or maybe they've just locked this in I'm not really sure how Linux Mint handles kernels so that's actually something I wanted to talk about was Linux Mint's kernel management because they have a really neat tool here which has not been in past distributions of Linux Mint. So you go to your update manager and if you go to let me zoom back in again I just feel like it makes it a lot easier for you guys to see this when I zoom so we're gonna to go to edit or is it in file where is it it's in here somewhere alright it's in view and then we can look at the list of Linux kernels and now it's showing us all the kernels that are available and a bunch of 313's from the Ubuntu and this is the one that we have installed by default which is 316.38 
Now on my other Mint machine, I'm currently running 316.0-45, which is a little bit later version. This is what is shipping in the Ubuntu Server Edition for 14.04 right now. So both kernels seem to work pretty well, and they're pretty close together, so I don't plan on messing with that. I'm just going to let... This is a stock install, and I'm just going to let it run. And other than uh, adding all of the different things that KDN Live needs, I haven't done anything special. I did use my own Samba network setup. Somebody had told me that it didn't work in Linux Mint 17.1 quite a while back. Works fine in 17.2. I had no problem. So this machine is serving the entire network with Samba, and that works out well and somebody asked me not too long ago why it was that I use Samba instead of NFS and that's because I never know when I'm going to get a Windows machine back on this network I have one now that's sort of here half the time but it's actually not even hooked up to the network it's just that uh, I have it's I have a machine that has two hard drives in it and one of them is a Windows install it's not mine it's Cindy's so I may need to share a file with it every now and again so that's why I'm using Samba and I just find Samba easier to use if you have all Linux boxes you can use NFS so there you go I guess this video is more of a Q&A than anything else somebody also asked me not too long ago in my in the comments um, about can you run Windows programs on Linux and of course this is a, a recurring question and the answer is yes no because you can always run wine which is uh, I did install on this machine so I have a couple of Windows programs that are running so we can we can look at configure wine while we're talking about this and this is the Windows emulation layer although they say it's not emulation where it uh, allows you to run Windows software on Linux I only have a couple of applications that I've installed they're both old audio applications that I like it's like Adobe Audition 3 and an old audio player and I've talked about those in past videos other software that I always put on the machine I always put on a bunch of audio video software um, like I'll give you a, for instance here's a here's a groovy little piece of software that I just can't really live without. I don't use it very often, but it's called Asunder, and it is a CD ripper. And I have about 2,000 CDs, so I do have needs on occasion to rip a CD. And this allows you to do it in a lot of different formats. I haven't gone through and set this up yet. So for the file names, I don't make a directory. I don't make a playlist. Uh, music file let's see I just do the artist and title and not the number usually so that's set up and then as far as encoding is concerned check this out I mean you could make aug files now I don't know how many people use aug files these days got a flack uh, encoder there which is really nice and you can also do standard mp3s and out of the box it's set up to do uh, aug files I'm gonna turn that off Turn off the variable bitrate. I'm not a big fan of that either. So that's actually set up and ready to rock and roll. This will make uh, MP3 files from things that I ripped from CD. And we can also do wave uncompressed, which is really nice because a lot of the time when I'm getting audio off a of CD, I'm, I'm planning on putting it in a digital audio workstation anyway, so I don't want anything done to it. But neat little program. It's in the repos. Works quite well. So if you want to rip your CD collection in, for whatever reason that's a good one to use another one that I like an awful lot if you have a lot of mp3 files to deal with or just music files in general is a this program called audio tag tool it doesn't look like much but it's one of the best batch tag editors that I've ever seen so if you have several hundred files or maybe even a couple thousand then this is a great tool to play with here's another great audio tool for those of you who may be interested that I always like to have around 
It's called Easy MP3 Gain. And what this does is that it'll go through all of your MP3 files and it will level them out. Now it doesn't actually like re-encode the file where you'll lose a generation of quality. It just sets the replay gain. And if you leave it on this 89 dB right here and just run it through all your stuff, then everything will be at a nice consistent volume. So that's pretty cool, especially if you have a big, you know, mix of MP3s and some of them are real loud and some of them are real soft. That will level things out. And it's non-destructive. You can go back and take it out later if you want to using other software. You can put it back to wherever it was or whatever the deal is. So that's something to take a look at. That's also in the repos. Just do a search for easy MP3 gain. Let's see, what else do I have for audio software? We've talked about QCD player in the past, which is this little guy right here. And... Uh, QCD player is just an old audio player. This thing's actually more than 10 years old now. I think I first got this in 2003, and I've kind of hacked at it and made and, and made it do what I wanted to do. It's a Windows application. So I installed all this software last night, and I've been playing with it today. And I have uh, noticed something very interesting that's happened. I want to go in here on YouTube and show you guys because in in a way this is a big thank you um let me into my creator studio and i want to look at the analyt analytics and i want to show you something here as soon as it takes it takes a little while to load i have the world's slowest internet connection and we go down through here and look at the top 10 videos look what's number one right now um, how to install Ubuntu 1404 and it's it's up to 10,000 views now this video has been up for a while it's been up so long that when I went to look at it I had done it in a virtual machine and I was running Windows 7 for the host system and I dumped Windows a long time ago so I don't know this video has been up for a while and for a long time it didn't do anything and all of a sudden it has taken off um, I mean, it's like a in in the last month or two, I've gotten like a thirty percent increase in viewers, and that video has done gone viral. Put it this way: the last time I looked at that, I looked at this page like two days ago, and it was like eight thousand views. So it's had this video has had almost two thousand views in two days. So I don't know where it's been embedded or where it's been shared, but it's gone viral. And I think a lot of that has to do with Windows 10 because people are having to reinstall or upgrade or think about doing things with their Windows boxes. And most Windows users were not really that happy with Windows 8 anyway. And Windows 10, if it proves to be worse, uh, you're going to get a lot of people out there who are going to throw up their hands. Oops, sorry, I hit the desk with my knee, made a big old noise. Um, you're going to get a lot of people out there who are going to throw up their hands and they're going to be like, I don't want to deal with this anymore. They're looking for alternatives. And boy, Linux Mint is a nice alternative. Other than the KDN Live thing, it's worked beautifully for me. And here's one of the coolest things that came out of it. I had to reinstall uh, VirtualBox. Okay. And so I was trying to figure out what to do because... I think in the last video or the video before I was talking about that I was running version 4.3 something or other, well 5.0 is out, right? So I thought, hey, this is a great time, I'll switch to 5.0. So what I did was, is I went to Oracle's webpage and I downloaded the deb file. And when I went to install it, Linux Mint said, hey, this file is available in the repos, go get it from there and then you'll get automatic updates. And I thought about it for a minute and I went, yeah, let's go ahead and do that. And that way I don't have to do that manually. And I had been doing it manually just for safety's sake, I guess, for a while. And I thought, well, I'll go ahead and do that, you know. So I was able to download 5.0 directly from Linux Mint's repositories, put it in the system. I did download the extensions manually and put those in. And it worked beautifully. My machines booted right up. All I had to do was go and add them to the uh, to the system. And here we have Ubuntu running right now. This is my Ubuntu virtual machine running in 
uh, Oracle VM VirtualBox 5, and it works beautifully. So that was just about the easiest upgrade that I have done in a long, long time. <laughs> that was pretty nice. So I'm very impressed with Linux Mint so far, and I really am very appreciative to you guys for watching the videos, especially all the new subscribers. And we're going to keep talking about Linux. I need your suggestions, your comments, your ideas, because I would like to know what you'd like to know how to do in Linux. What is it that you want to know? We've covered all the basics so far. So if you're new to this channel, you can go back and look at my older Linux videos. I have a, I've covered a lot of basic things. Where do we go from here? I'd like to hear from you guys, and you could give me some suggestions and some ideas and things like that. And remember, gang, that it really doesn't matter when you're talking about the Ubuntu family of distros. Okay, so I'm running Linux Mint now because I'm liking it. Um, I've already got, I've got Ubuntu running it on another machine, and I've got two copies of Linux Mint or whatever the deal is. It, it all kind of works the same. There are some slight differences. Linux Mint is just polished, man. It's just so polished compared to Ubuntu. Now, if you're running on an old laptop or something like that, Ubuntu, I think, is a better better way to go because it's a bit simpler. It's a bit easier to keep up with. But if you're on a nice desktop and you got a big screen, Linux Mint just gives you so many options, things that you can do to really tweak it out and make it look nice. And no, I haven't gone very far off the theme, but there's like settings here like, check this out. I'm gonna go in here and we're gonna look at the login window. Now, the Mint Desktop Manager is a bit of a pain, but I have found that if you change the theme here to something simpler, I put it on Carbon, which is this one right here, that uh, it tends to be a bit more stable. And what else, what other settings do I like? I've I've showed you in the last video. I went through all the settings, but it, you can just tweak this out. It is so polished. It's so refined, and there's a lot of really neat things that you can do to Linux Mint for a big desktop experience. Like I said, Ubuntu with the Unity desktop, I think that's better for a laptop. I'm running it on my laptop, but on a big computer, Linux Mint rocks. So anyway, I've rambled on enough. I realize that this video has had no uh, theme to it <laughs> other than just me talking. But if you have any comments, suggestions, whatever, I'm always looking for those. And enjoying the debates that we're having in some of these uh, comment threads, too. So, And I will post uh, the commands to install KDN Live in case that's something that you want to do. Now that applies only to Linux Mint. If you're running Ubuntu, you can go get it out of the repositories and it should work just fine for you. And that's going to be about it, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for watching. Don't forget, if you want me to help you get started with Linux, check out the link to easylinux.com down in the description below and you can find out how I can personally walk you through your Linux install. So, Thanks for watching. Talk to you again soon.